apprivoiser Et c'est bien on va qu'on l'appelle C'est lui qu'on... Hello and welcome to the Main Man Show. We are coming to you from our studios in Riyadh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And today we have the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's first opera singer, Sausanat Bahiti. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, I had to give you that extra flair when yeah. introducing you, and I promise I'll be I'll be gentle in this, this interview. <laughs> so, you know, let, let's get down to business and start. So you, you founded the Soulful Voice Studio in Jeddah, and you're an initiative leader for the Saudi National Orchestra and Choir at the Saudi Music Commission. So can you tell us a little bit about both roles? Sure. So um, when I decided to shift into music, I was thinking, what does the industry need? And of course, the music industry is still at the very early stages. So when I uh, thought of vocal coaching, of course, relevancy, me being a singer, uh, it was non-existent. Uh, the concept of vocal coaching for singers, uh, so many singers, even uh, not just the professional ones, the up and coming ones are unaware of the importance of it and the existence of it. So I have a passion for teaching as well. So I thought it's only fitting to establish this kind of uh, institute to offer this kind of service and I'm very uh, committed to offering the best uh, level of quality when it comes to uh, vocal coaching and even uh, I slightly drift into career coaching for singers as well. Okay. Yes. All right. And uh, is, is, is your role similar uh, to that with the uh, National Orchestra as well? No. So with the National Orchestra, I'm working as a, a project manager, the role of a project manager, purely uh, leading the, the initiative with the rest of the team, of course, and the management uh, and establishing it, training them. Um, and of course, they have been performing a lot and the demand is really growing for them. They're getting really popular. Uh, they had a performance in Paris and they had last year that was uh, in September this year they had a performance in uh, Mexico that was just uh, very recent and they were both very successful and they're really gaining traction out there all right okay and uh, you know uh, as you mentioned you know music in general is relatively uh, you know a new industry here in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and with a new industry there are lots of interesting initiatives just like the National Orchestra and Choir and there is also the upcoming launch of the Saudi Opera House in 226 so how do you see the uh, opera scene evolving in Saudi Arabia is it gaining you know any popularity or is it like does it have its fan base that's constantly growing opera has a fan base that is growing steadily but slowly um, just because the the offering of opera is still uh, small and every time opera is performed it's getting more and more audience it's getting more and more the liking of other uh, individuals of, of the audience and of course, I see it very fitting because opera is all about luxury, royalty, and, and the fanciness. And mm -hmm. I feel like the Saudi consumer and the Saudi audience is in the same circle okay. with this kind of um, identification of, of luxury and, and uh, fancy. So I think it's going to be uh, a big hit. Uh, if it's done right and if it's like represented very well and um, the people who are offering it are offering it in the, in the simple form of it not in the heavy form of opera okay. just so that people don't shy away <laughs> all right and uh, <clears throat> as someone who's part of uh, the ecosystem and creating this foundation how do you see it progressing so far I think it's going at a good pace. Um, I mean, I know the Saudi Opera House that's been announced uh, as part of Jeddah Central Development, mm -hmm. and it's meant to open in 2026. Uh, personally, I still don't have any uh, direct connection with the establishment, but I hear the updates uh, there in the the phase of building and uh, establishing the designs and whatnot. And I think hitting 2026 is a very good uh, time to, to start, especially that on the other hand, the Ministry of Culture and the Music Commission is laying the groundwork for music in general as well. All right. And uh, so why choose opera 
as 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 a genre for music for you as a career you know why specifically opera and you know what motivates you and keeps you going because you know obviously it's also a new industry here yeah yeah i mean i get this question a lot as in why opera why not something else even though for me as a singer when i started um not when i started singing from a very early age i wasn't singing opera opera only came along when i was like 18 or 19 uh back in 2008 Mm -hmm. and the reason why i chose it it's because it's so unique it's so rich with art and the way the way a singer expresses themselves using this strong voice mm-hmm. this is what really captivated me and because it's not uh, popular in this part of the world i chose it because i want to uh, pioneer and lead introducing opera to this part of the world um, i mean opera has been introduced to the rest of the middle east before but it's not it's still not so popular yeah. and i see it's not as the mainstream gaps. as the other kind of music no genres. and i see the gaps why it hasn't uh gained popularity for other uh <clears throat> countries in in the arab world and this particularly excites me to okay. to really take it forward and and um, pioneer it and, and lead it to the audience i mean of course um i face so many times uh with uh, criticism and and challenging situations that for example because it's still not popular so i don't get as many opportunities as other genres would have Mm -hmm. um but it pushes me to be creative it pushes me to um try to be innovative and how i i move Mm -hmm. forward and of course when your goal and when your dream is something of big value that is not popularity it's not becoming a celebrity yeah this has a a lifelong drive and it provides you with a lifelong energy let's say and fuel to keep on going um and i cannot deny having uh, a support group around me to to keep me going and pushing me forward Mm -hmm putting me back up when I'm feeling down. So who's the usual suspects in this support group? My family. I'm yeah. very grateful for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my yeah. family, every time I go back to them and I'm frustrated or I'm uh, like angry with a certain situation that happened, I'd be like, I want to give this up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I mean, I never thought of it this way that I would ever um, get in a certain situation. I say, I want to give it up, even though it's my dream, even though it's something I love. I thought this would happen with my previous career for example in marketing when okay. when i wasn't happy with it and people would tell you oh because you're not it's you're, it's not your passion mm-hmm. but no even when you are working in something that you're passionate about you still can get stressed out you still can get frustrated and 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 reach points where you want yes. to give up mm-hmm. but it's just those those group of people who help you and and remind you of the the bigger picture tell you to calm down not to take rash decisions and you know just help you to get back on track all right okay and uh so before so you you said you were 18 when you uh transitioned into opera music so what kind of music were you singing before that i was actually into rock for real yeah okay yeah i mean you, st- I, I you strike slowly. me as a Def Leppard girl. You like Def Leppard? <laughs> Metallica. Metallica? Or I like Metallica too. So. Yeah, I mean, the first song I performed and sang on guitar. Yeah. Because guitar is my instrument. Okay. Uh, it was Metallica's Nothing Else Matters. And well, I was. In my six head, years I old. knew she was going to say Nothing Else Matters. I don't know. It's a popular one, the most popular one. <laughs> yeah, but like when yeah. I hear Metallica right away, that exactly. song comes to mind. Exactly. Okay. And and yeah, so I, 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 uh, I was into rock, mm-hmm. uh, pl- playing guitar and singing rock songs but not okay. the heavy rock of course yeah so metallica so pearl jam guns N' roses that level of so you never tried to sing like kill switch engage or anything no like that. You know, okay, <laughs> the rasps that, and all uh, no uh, least, I didn't well, it's get good there. that you know kill switch and engage <laughs> like, at least i know what kind yes. of rock music or level of rock music you're into yeah. and uh you know aside from from all that you you are the first woman to perform the national anthem publicly in mm. 2019 so um can you give us you know your just share with us your th- feelings and experience and you know that experience how yeah. what yeah. stands out in mind what, what 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 
like if you reflect in that moment what 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 words can you use to describe it okay There. so thankfully i wasn't aware of that fact when i performed okay and i say thankfully for a reason because i was already so stressed out okay it was already a big deal because that was my debut mm -hmm. it was my first time ever to perform in saudi arabia publicly and to be announced as sosan al bahiti the saudi opera singer um and it was not just in Saudi, it was in Riyadh, the capital city. It was on a very important stage, the King Fahad Cultural Center, with a very important orchestra, the La Scala di Milano, uh, which is, if not the most important orchestra in opera, in the world of opera. Okay. I was opening for them. So that was such a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, I mean, I felt like I sang with my soul on that day. All right. And then afterwards, when I was told that this was a first, another first for me, it just filled me up with even more pride because I was already so proud to 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 have this moment, mm -hmm. uh, which I never imagined I would have. All right. Uh, but yeah, I was extremely proud and. It, it reflects me and who I am and, and my passion for being a leader. All right. And in 2019, you decided to make a full-fledged shift from marketing yeah. to, you know, the opera world. Um, what are some key highlights or memories that you have uh, from this period, you know, from 2019 till, till today? I mean... This bold move, very bold move, was was a big deal and, of course, life changing. Um, my family. Uh, one of the things that always rings a bell in my ear is uh, my family always tells me how happy I am now versus how I was before, and how different I became as a personality. Much calmer, much more relaxed, and mm -hmm. just much more joyful. Um, this tells me constantly that I'm on the right track and it's like my compass if I if I see myself miserable I know I'm going in the wrong direction right. um, some of the highlights in in my career definitely meeting Andrea Bocelli in okay. Al-Ula oh nice I was privileged enough to be invited to meet him um, before his concert him and his wonderful family and they are all wonderful people and he's just an amazing person which, which year was this? 2021 before yeah. i can't remember was it before covid or after covid i don't know because he's i think before covid because he was in in, in Lola before and after uh, yeah before covid, COVID. so yeah, i wanted yeah. to see because if it was before covid i was there too and we just never bumped into each other yeah it was after no, no it was before there. it was actually okay. before all right yeah so and I, yeah, it yeah. happened overnight and yeah, alhamdulillah everything got so easy in our way to to go and, and meet him yeah. uh, that was one of the key highlights and then yeah, I think the other one would be performing the national anthem for the first time. Yeah? Yeah, my Did debut. Did you get goosebumps? Oof, you know? non-stop. Non-stop? Okay. <laughs> yes, and yes. How, how did it feel when, when you were done? When after you finished, you performed, and then you left uh, the stage? And I was above the stars. I yeah. was literally above the stars. It was out of this world. I mean the excitement the happiness the pride the seeing the the audience's reaction as well was overwhelming i was really overwhelmed yeah okay and uh, you know when you made the shift what were the key you know what was like the most key factors that influenced you to make this choice to mm. shift from marketing to orchestra you know to opera yeah yeah i mean was at it? that point, I was at rock bottom. Yeah. And and career wise, it kept I, my career kept on going down, and I wasn't happy personally. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, enough of this. I'm not going to move somewhere else. Yeah. That I'm going to be miserable. If I'm gonna make a move, I will have to make sure this is what I want. This is what I'm gonna be good at and mm -hmm. love at the same time. And then it. It was literally like, you know, when, when you get a, the, in the cartoons, you get the light bulb yeah. next to your head. It was exactly like that. I felt like a light bulb came came up and I, I realized, hold on, this is the right time to be an artist and mm -hmm. a singer because, first of all, this is what I'm passionate about. Yeah. 
uh, Vision 2030 was just announced. Uh, General Entertainment Authority was just announced with the announcement of the great support for Saudi artists. Okay. So I'm like, I think this is the right time. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it wasn't just, um, okay, let's just become an artist. No, I, I, I had a plan. I had a vision. Yeah. Uh, what I wanted to do with it, not just on the artist front, but on a vocal coaching front. I didn't want to just be an artist for the sake of making music and performing. No, I wanted to give more because I felt like I can give yeah. more, which is where vocal coaching came in. All right, so it's it's and, and you were listening to Metallica, and then the part where they go never care for what they say, yeah. never care for what they do, and nothing else matters, right? Yeah, they just gave nothing you that. else matters. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that's this is fair enough. So, what, what's what's um, what's in the horizons for for you as a opera singer? Tell us what's what's in the works. What's in the works? I have some exciting stages to perform on, inshallah. Yeah, uh, Give, tell us one. At least get us excited with venues. you. Venues. <laughs> get us excited with you about these venues. You know, we, just, I we mean, gotta know. <laughs> I have London coming up, inshallah. All right. In a, uh, in which a, which venue in London? In so it's not a musical venue. Yeah. It's the Natural History Museum. Okay, that's awesome. It's a beautiful, okay. beautiful museum. I mean, I thought you were going to say the Royal Albert Hall, but either way, inshallah. that's still cool. Inshallah, inshallah, that's yeah. coming up, inshallah. Okay, Royal Albert Hall, right here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was actually just in London. I passed next to it. I'm like, I'm yeah. going to perform One day, one, one day, day, huh? I'm going to get in right. there. <laughs> should perform Nothing Else Matters but the opera version. The operatic. You know, this is something that I'm very passionate about. Yeah. The fusion kind of opera. Okay. To take another genre and make it into opera so okay. you might find me actually doing that someday All right. so, and, and, and when you do that you have to thank me after this i will yeah. i will credit you for the idea creative people you know we have the same wavelength and, and mindset yeah. so yeah. what's what's something intriguing you know about being an opera singer what you know is something that is interesting cool that nobody knows other than people in the know of of in the opera world you know I mean, I think it's not a big secret, but it's something that is not very obvious as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's the 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 capacity of our voices. Yeah. I mean, people hear me speaking and they tell me, "Oh, you have a deep voice." Okay. But when I sing, I go really high. Okay. And my voice gets really thin. So, the voice of an opera singer has great capacities, mm -hmm. and Unlike what a lot of people think, it's not screaming, it's, okay. it's singing. Yeah, it's not kill switch engage. <laughs> no. <laughs> Where it's it's singing and it's really based, uh, it's more relying on breathing okay. more than the voice. Really? This is this is the real the real secret. Okay. Uh, this loud, strong and, and beautiful voice is uh, really relying on the uh, breath and the strength of the singer's breath rather than the voice itself so if you have a strong breath and you know how to use it and the right technique mm -hmm. you'll be able to sing nicely i can teach you that as well all right <laughs> i'm more than happy to take yeah. you up on that offer any any time and um before we uh get on to the other part of this interview uh what personal message do you have for arab news and its audience and the mayman show audience I always say that, and it's something uh, that is cannot cannot be emphasized enough. Um, you can follow your dreams, yeah, and it's not as dreamy as it okay. sounds, and it's not unrealistic. If you put a plan, a vision, uh, you support it with good values to drive your your dream. Um, and and get 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 the right advice from the right people and you will be able to achieve things that you never thought you could all right okay mm -hmm. and uh before we wrap up this interview we're gonna put your vocals to the oh. test and you know <laughs> get a good example of of your breathing techniques and your vocal techniques are these mics ready for it <laughs> let's see let's see and uh so we're gonna give you the floor and uh all right. Let the audience uh, hear what you have. Okay. <laughs> 
qu'on l'appelle C'est lui qu'on vient de refuser à Nice Mais la sous-prière L'on parle bien L'autre se tait Et c'est l'autre Que je préfère Il n'a rien dit Mais il me plaît L'amour 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 est enfant de bohème Il n'a jamais, jamais connu de loi Si tu ne m'aimes pas, je t'aime Si je t'aime, prends garde à toi si tu ne m'aimes pas, si tu ne m'aimes pas, je t'aime. Mais si je t'aime, si je t'aime, prends garde à toi. Okay, yeah, that was very interesting. And uh, you have a very beautiful voice. Thank and, you. And uh, that's, uh, I mean, we, we can sit and talk to you all, all day long, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll let you go to your business. And uh, I'd like to thank you again for, for coming on to the show. Thank you for having me. It was uh, a really fun discussion. And it was light and, and simple. I like that. So thank you for having me once again. All right. Sounds good. And uh, be sure to tune in to our next episode of The Me Man Show. See you later. Mm-hmm.